Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, October 24, 2019. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. We have stuff on the docket. We certainly have stuff to discuss. The market is eerily quiet. It's really getting spooky in terms of the type of volume and the trading activity. It's not necessarily garden variety market behavior. However, I've got some comments on that. I'll hold off till a little bit later. We need a little bit of a teaser to get things started. Let's start, since we're on the daily chart, we'll start with the look of the market from a daily chart perspective. Is there anything wrong with the market? Is there anything really negative on this page and the answer is no maybe we're coming up to the highs again certainly we could have what would be a potential triple top that's certainly possible but technically speaking the markets in an uptrend there's nothing wrong now we do have to separate out comments like that from longer term to shorter term and when I say shorter term and longer term let me define what that means because it means something different to everybody so for me Short term is really hours to a few days. That's it. Longer term to me is several days to several weeks. I'm not really looking out, you know, 12 weeks or six months at a time. We can see it on longer term charts. We talk about it sometimes. But for the most part, it's hard to make money thinking out six months unless you're a long term investor taking a position and holding a position. That's not necessarily what I do, at least not for what we're doing here. So as defined, short term, long term. So long term, there's nothing wrong with the market. Short term, not so much. It's teetering, and that's the issue. It's teetering on either breaking out, getting some panic buying, some FOMO ramped up, or on the flip side, we're also teetering by revisiting 297 or potentially even lower. Let's get right down and dirty. Let me show you exactly what I'm looking at. And then I want to describe a little bit about the intraday activity and what led me to believe one thing or the other at a specific time. The hourly chart. From a big picture perspective, there's really nothing wrong with the technicals. There's nothing wrong with the chart. It's in an uptrend. However, we had an interesting hourly chart reversal candle on the first candle of the day today. Now we're trading inside of that candle. It's a very simple equation. As long as we're trading inside of that, it's some kind of a bear flag, bear wedge pattern, bear whatever you want to call it. Here's the deal. This is likely going to resolve itself when you wake up in the morning or long before. Here's what I mean by that. Either they're going to be trading above today's high. That's going to be a breakout. That's going to be the road to 305. Not all in one bite, and it certainly could go higher. I'm using 305 as a way station, as an obvious stopping point. The flip side of that, this bear flag pattern, bearish wedge pattern, begins to play out or take place to the downside. We begin getting below the 50-period moving average on this hourly chart, challenge these lows here, and you start looking about and discussing 297. Outside of that, there's really not much more on this chart. When I look at this, usually I focus on the first thing that jumps off the chart at me, and this is absolutely the first thing that jumps off the chart at me. Above today's high, likely some panic buying going on. Barring that, you're in a stuck-in-the-mud bearish formation. Now we take it down to a shorter time frame, take it down to a 15-minute intraday chart. Something else I want to point out. Nothing we can hang our hat on just something I observed in the middle of the day. And what I want to do is take that information and pass it along because it's not the first time I've seen stuff like this. And when you see stuff like this, it's not that you can trade off stuff like this, but it's telling you something. It's the market's way of turning the page and giving you another piece to the puzzle, another part of the story. So this morning we have a gap in crap. That's obvious. That happens, and that's not a big deal. It happens mainly with institutional participation, meaning the institutions or at least larger investors that can move the markets. You need money to move the markets. So we'll call them institutions. 
So institutions are selling into the gap up. They're selling into the strength, taking chips off the table for whatever the reason is. It's not indicative of one thing or the other every single time. It just is what it is. It's a duck. If it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's a duck. A gap in crap, institutions sold into it, taking chips off the table. It is what it is. Doesn't mean they won't go higher tomorrow. It's just what happened today. But that's more garden variety than the next thing. So the next thing comes right after noon, about 12.10 in the afternoon, somewhere in that neighborhood. Here's the candle ending 12.15. We had 30 minutes of a real hard sell going on, and this candle from up where it was, and the high in this candle was 300.72, down to the low less than 30 minutes later of 299.52. That's a pretty big drop in a short period of time. And what happened was I wasn't really watching the market per se at the time, but out of the corner of my eye, my screens were flashing. I have red, I have green, I have yellow. Yellow flashes, red is red, and green is green for obvious reasons, and everything was flashing all of a sudden, like the data in my computer slowed down, meaning the data was having trouble squeezing through. There was a lot of activity entering the market. There was what we call a big sell program. Why does that happen? Who causes that to happen? We can list out conspiracy theory 1.0, 2.0, whatever you like. The point is, is that it happened. And you can see in the afternoon what happened at the end of the day. What normally happens, the market ran up to do what? To test the high of the breakdown candle. Almost got to the high, made an attempt to get to the high. We talk about this every single day. Day. Not necessarily in the last candle of the day, but we talk about testing the highs of breakdown candles, the lows of breakup candles every single day. Why am I pounding the table? Because it's opportunity knocking. They're not all going to be the same and they're not all going to work, but it's opportunity knocking. So we know what happens. Get above the high. You want to test the next one. Can't get above the high. What happens? Go in the other direction. Energy will be expended one way or the other. Back to the hourly chart. 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, or somewhere thereabouts, this is going to go down. 20% or somewhere thereabout, this is going to go up, but that same level of energy is going to be released either way, whether it's going northbound or southbound. Let's get a quick look, throwing you a short hop. We're getting the ball around the horn. Let's get a look at the pre-market notes from inside the numbers. You can take a snapshot, you can read it on your own. What I'm doing here is I'm showing you the mindset of what's going on in the morning. Also, the concept is this. This helps traders that are actively trading during the day. If you're actively trading during the day and you want this help, if you think it would be helpful, you see what's here, you see what's here just about every single day, and if you think it would be helpful, you can certainly hop on board and try it out for a month inside the numbers. What we have are stocks on the move. We have the commentary throughout the day. And it is helpful to a lot of traders out there. I do get the best messages. And certainly the best ones are the ones with the success stories. But I get the other messages too. And that's okay. I get the frustration messages. Let's talk about one of those frustration messages because it was a good one, not in a good way for the trader who was frustrated, but it's a good way as a learning experience for everybody. And you know me, I like to keep things simple, so we're going to keep this simple too, but it's part of the psychology behind trading. Today wasn't an easy day. The market was up, the market was down. The market was up, the market was chop shop. It's teetering on breaking out, then it's teetering on breaking down. There are traders that will get chopped up on a day like today. It happens every single day. It's like walking into a casino. You look at all the tables, all the people standing, sitting at the tables, gambling, pulling the slot machine, hitting the buttons, whatever. You know that the majority of those people are losing money. That's just the way it is. Those are the facts. So if the market is opened and there's trading accounts trading in the market, the majority of them are losing money. And that applies to the majority of the retail trading accounts. You know, John and Mary lunch bucket. You and me. Now, hopefully the majority of people listening here aren't losing. I'm talking about in mass. The majority of people trading 
period, full stop, are losing. All right, so it's enough with Debbie Downer. Let's get to how can you help me? So a trader sends me an email today, and we'll stay anonymous. We'll call him Mr. X, Trader X. Here's basically the summary of the email. I'm not going to read it to you. I'll give you the concept. Trader X is doing well. Today is not a good day. And when it's not a good day, sometimes our subconscious allows us to break the rules. Why does that happen? Because our subconscious wants us to believe that we can win back the money and turn it around. It's a guess. It's a gamble. It's trading on hopium. We know that, but we still think it can work out. We've convinced ourselves, even though we're telling ourselves, we're justifying it by saying, I know this really is wrong, but I know this is going to work out. I think it's going to work out. If it works out, I'll get back to even and I'll get out and I'll be done for the day. Or we even stretch it and say, hey, I could even be up a thou for the day. I could be up 2,500 for the day. I could be up 300 for the day. Whatever your number is. So we take the trade. We start losing. Now a bad day is getting worse. So we cut and run, but we do it again. And we do it two, three, four, five times, whatever it is. And now we've turned a bad day or a losing day into a really bad day. And we feel terrible. We broke all the rules and we're stuck in the mud. We don't know what to do. Well, guess what? Here's what we do. We walk away. You're not going to get the money back today. It's not going to happen. We'll get it back another day, or we're going to have to get it back over a series of days, but that's the only option. Trying to do the same thing that just didn't work five times is the wrong answer. Shut it down. Walk away. You need a fresh start. You need a fresh look. You need a clear mind. Walk away. We've all been there. I'm 110% sure. Let me ask you this. Did I just roll off the scenario that many of you related to because I heard about it somewhere or from somebody else? I've lived it just the same. You all know that. I've been doing this for decades. I wasn't good at it in the beginning. Camp IWM. I'm fascinated by this chart. Not the whole chart, just the last few days. There's a couple of things going on here that has me kind of looking at it crooked. Earlier in the day, it looked like it was going to be a reversal day, and I specified it inside the numbers, but I said it's a long afternoon and a lot can change, but I was just noticing we were trading down at the lows. But then I noticed when we started to bounce off the lows, look at this perfect symmetry of making a new low each day, but rallying back to recover. I've seen that before. You see it in both ways. You see it at highs. You see it on lows. It's just interesting to say the least. A variety of different analysts may have different opinions on what's going on here from a short-term perspective. Some may see bullish. Some may see bearish. I'll tell you what I see. Nothing's changed. I see bullish above this trend line, which just so happens to coincide with this 200 period moving average and the 100 period moving average sneaking up behind it. So above this trend line, it's bullish. Also, we've had this huge flagpole, and now we're starting to put in a bull flag pattern. Also bullish. What does it want to do? It wants to go run and test these highs up here. 157, 158, 159. We're not going to refine it right now. That's just conceptually what I see on the chart. Getting below this trend line, below these moving averages, something different is going on. Right now, we're in the middle, either going to break out and head to that 158 general area, or we could certainly come back down to test the trend line, but that's not necessarily a negative. We've done that before. Go back and look over here. This was on the 20th of September. You come back to test the trend line and have a pretty nice bounce away from the trend line. Only for one day in that case, it was in the middle of a much larger decline across the markets. In this case, could come back to test the trend line or the trend line could fail. Either way, at least we know what they're serving us. You throw 100 miles an hour, at least I know what I'm getting when I step in the box. You throw junk, same thing. I got to move up in the box. The trend line is the box. Above the trend line is bullish, below is bearish. The transportation department. So it's interesting that the transports were down about half a percent today and earlier in the day, the IWM was certainly down as well. Finished down on the day, but it was down a lot more earlier. We're seeing 
herky-jerky markets. We're back to the SPY for a second, threw you another short hop, but there's a reason. I forgot to discuss the volume. So the volume has been extremely, extremely light, kind of eerily spooky light. So here's what I'll say. We've seen this before. Now, again, here's one of those things that we can't use for direct trading information, but it's information nonetheless. When I've seen this before, the extra light volume, it's really volume for vegans. Generally, after that, and we don't know how long it's going to last. It could last another two days, another four days, or it could be over today. But generally, we see an explosion after that of volume. It doesn't have to happen all at once, and it doesn't have to be a double the volume. But generally speaking, we're going to see a pickup in volume. So here's the deal. If, in fact, we see a gap higher and we're seeing an explosion to new prices, new highs, for example, you're going to see a pickup in volume to do that. On the flip side, if we see a market that's selling more than two or three points, you're going to see a pickup in volume. Over to the 15-minute chart for a moment. Remember that down half an hour period of time we discussed earlier, 12 o'clock to about 12.30. The volume picked up. That's what I'm discussing. This is really on a micro scale. These, it's really three candles here. This one was like a test candle. They ran down and ran back up, so it looked like a fake out. And maybe this is where the screens were flashing. It's probably here, right around 12 o'clock. Turn of the half an hour, turn of the midday. This is probably where I saw the screens flashing. So here's your 30-minute period of time. And you had that run down and run right back up. In fact, let's take a look at a five-minute chart, and we'll see that run. There it is, right here. So here it is at 11.55. The market all of a sudden takes this huge, fast dip, and it comes all the way back, and just a few minutes later, it's at the highs again. That's shenanigans. Now, sometimes it doesn't come down again. It just keeps going higher. And you say, well, I can't believe they didn't let me on board down there. And you kick yourself because you didn't buy it down there, but you didn't have the chance to think about it. Well, this one came back down. We'll go back to the hourly chart a number of times in the afternoon. So the market basically played ping pong in the afternoon. You can see it better on a 15-minute chart, you're basically just going back and forth. And to me, the fact that you just didn't recover and stay back at the highs told me there was likely something else going on. Trying to take all the information they're throwing at me, putting it together, mixing it up on the table, and trying to put together the puzzle. We got off on a tangent. Let's get back over to the transports. I guess we didn't get off on a tangent. I guess I got off on a tangent. You were there for the ride. There's really nothing wrong with the transports. We are overextended in terms of on a short-term basis away from the moving averages. Look how many days up in a row we are here away from the moving averages. It would be garden variety, in fact, normal garden variety market behavior to come back to test the moving averages or at least, at least halfway home. Eat some time off the clock. Go back and forth for a while. Let the moving averages come up toward price. Other than that, there's nothing you can do with the transports here. They're either going to break out or they're going to come down, but you can't guess which way it's going to go. As my second favorite market leading indicator, did the transports give us a clue one way or the other today? Half a percent down, 50 points, not so much, not on close. If we closed where we were at lows today, maybe a different story, maybe a leading indicator, but for now, we're just going to leave it be. Now we go over to the Qs. A little bit of a different story. We're having some impact from Amazon. How much of the queues is Amazon? About 9%. What's Amazon doing? It's down about 100 bucks. They reported at 4 o'clock. They're down 100 bucks. They're dragging the queues down after the fact. We don't know where Amazon's going to be in the morning. Maybe they'll be down $200. Maybe they'll be up a dollar. We don't know. A lot can happen overnight. A lot happens in the morning. A lot happens. We just take it for what it is at present. So the queues closed today at 194 and change. After hours, they're trading at about 193. Not a big deal. There's a gap around 192. And guess what? Even if they came back to fill the gap, is that really a big deal? Not really. As long as you stay, and we talked about this yesterday, as long as you stay in this upper range here, right? then there's nothing wrong with the cues. This is essentially a bull flag pattern in the making. 
Maybe it takes another couple of weeks. Maybe it takes longer. Maybe it busts out tomorrow. We don't know. But we do know a couple of things. We're going back and forth playing ping pong, similar to what we discussed in the SPY. So at the lows, you expect it to go back up until it doesn't. At the highs, you don't expect it to break out until it does. That's the way it works. And think about it. It never feels like you should be selling the high, although it goes back down every time. Until now, we'll see. Same thing at the lows. Every time it comes down near the lows, it goes back up. Only happened a couple of times so far, but that's generally what you see in these channels. And the reason why, sometimes it takes looking at a channel to have that aha moment to say, well, yeah, I understand why it feels really, really wrong at the bottom of the channel to be buying it. And it feels equally wrong to be selling the top of the channel, but that essentially is and was right. It's right until it's not. One time, it won't be right. It could be right on either side three, four, five times a piece before it's wrong. That's the business of trading. It doesn't have to apply only to the Q chart. The QQQ chart can apply to any stock, any commodity, any chart under the sun. That's the beauty of what we do. All charts act and react the same way. So everything that I teach in the Lazy E-Mini Trader course can be applied to any chart. And yeah, we're going to look at some stocks again too. Apparently, we like that. The XLF, down 8 cents. Anything we can do with that? Not really. Same routine. We're in this upper range here, in this mini channel, bull flag pattern, whatever you want to call it. It's either going to break out to the top side or it's going to break down in the southern direction. Either way. While it's going back and forth, there's nothing to do. You're either long or you're short anticipating a breakdown. I'm not anticipating a breakdown, but it will likely follow suit with whatever the major markets are doing, whatever the major indices are doing. How about the SMH? This is the exchange-traded fund that tracks the Philadelphia Semiconductor Index. What's this telling us? Bullish. Calling balls and strikes one chart at a time, taking each chart independent of one another. This is bullish. You had one little sachet down below, I guess two little sachets down. Depends on where you want the channel to be or the bottom of the channel to be. But this is an outlier. Now look where we are, right back to the top. It wants to break out. You've had some surprises across the semi-space. China, some poor earnings releases, or some poor earnings reactions. But guess what? They keep going higher. You're going to need one heck of a surprise to pull the rug out from the SMH. How about another short hop? We'll take a look at a few stocks. So I'm going over the ones that came in by request. Delta Airlines. It's bearish. You see, this is the exact opposite of what we just saw. We have a flagpole and we have the flag in the other direction. So we have a bear flag pattern. Generally, this wants to go the other way or in the southern direction. But we don't know that for sure until we look at more charts. That's what we saw on this chart. But one chart doesn't ever give us a conclusion. Here's the weekly chart. So the daily chart, we were below moving averages. The weekly chart, we're below moving averages, all but one of them. Here's the deal on Delta. If you can close a week back above 55 they'll want to run toward the top end of the breakdown candle. Until and unless that happens, no dice. Even on the daily chart, you can see getting above 55 and you come right up into this window of the gap, gap fill. So it's not going to be easy for Delta to grind higher. Looking at an airline and looking at the SPY near the highs. So the S&P 500 is near highs. Other markets are near highs. Transports are are near highs. Delta is not. It's a bearish pattern, low on the chart, having trouble. What is that telling us? It's telling us the institutional investor is not buying the story. Not in Delta. Not yet. Not until you clear 55 and then some. Roku, next up. This was a request. This is some rodeo stock. Unbelievable where this came from, where it's been, it's just remarkable. 
And it's not like the first time I ever saw Roku. It's just every time I look at this chart, it's hard to believe. This is since May. It was 65 bucks in May. That's this year. It was also 175 or whatever the high was. 176.55 same year. That's redonkulous. And you know what? It's a bullish chart. As long as you remain closing daily above 122, it's a bullish chart. Wants to run higher. Well, first stop would be about 144. Then you got the gap and the semi-fat round number around 150. Getting above that is a different story. Not so easy, but certainly it's winding up to get there. As long as you stay closing daily above 122 in business. Tesla came in by request, probably from earnings. Not a lot you can do with this here. You couldn't do anything before earnings, then take a guess, and you can't really do much now. Twitter, same routine. Had earnings today, got absolutely smoked, taken out behind the woodshed, shot three times, left for dead. What's that $30.78 line? That was from Stocks on the Move this morning. It got there at the end of the day, but by then the trade's off the table. You don't want the trade after it creeps into that number all day long it took to creep into there. You want the number or you want the trade on the first candle of the day like this where it made a low of 31.10. It doesn't have to be in the first candle of the day. I'm just saying you want it early in the day because you want that reactionary bounce away. You don't want the creeping market into a price. So this one came up short, but you see what happened. Wherever it did find the low, it gets a nice rally away from it. It doesn't happen after we've been creeping. So this one didn't get to the number. That happens. That's part of the business. Check in over at Amazon. They're still down about a hundy. We'll see what happens at the open tomorrow. And with that, it's really everything I had. It's everything I wanted to and intended to discuss tonight. So here I will pull the ripcord. Before I do that, I want to thank each and every one of you. Without you, these videos are not possible. So I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm David Frost. My strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.